Okay. So, thank you guys for joining us. My name is Ian Alexander. I'm the CEO and co-founder here at RepairTech, and today I'm excited to be giving you this webinar. We're going to go over all the things we've launched um, recently. There have been a lot of things. We've been moving super fast. So first of all, I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to get a review of what all those things are, ask any questions you might have about them, uh, because I know they've been coming in a flurry. And in addition to that, we have some new stuff to show you today, um, and that is just the beginning. So um, throughout the course of this webinar, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box, and I will uh, gladly take a look at those and answer them when I see them. Um, it looks like you guys are already pouring in the questions. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to give a brief overview of all the stuff that we've launched recently. There has been a lot. So first of all, uh, way back when we only had devices. So you had no way of organizing things in groups uh, and having settings by group. So we made customers. And customers are essentially groups of devices. Uh, for example, this one, Impress Technologies, has two devices under it. And we can see those different devices here. We can make mass changes based on that and search through those. Um, it also allows you to have contact info for the group or the customer, right? And then separate contact info for each device under that group. So um, customers was a lot of work. We had to change a lot of things on the back end in order to release that. Um, but it's finally out. That also coincided with a change in the way we do our installers. So the, uh, in the, originally we had the standard installer, which was for technicians to use. Um, and then we had a customer facing installer, which was kind of a generic installer with only contact information required. Um, with the introduction of customers, we replaced the customer facing installer with the customer installer. Uh, the customer installer is tied to a particular customer. So if I wanted to add a device to Impress, I can go there and we'll give you a, a unique URL that you can use to download that installer. And it'll then add that device straight into Impress magically. So um, that was customers. But then what people wanted was they wanted to be able to make mass changes to lots of different devices. So we released policies. So policies are essentially presets of settings. So if I go in here, I have my monitoring settings, I have my antivirus settings, I have uh, my notification settings and all of that. And all of those settings, you would normally have to manually go through and configure for every single device you added. So we created policies. And policies allow you to set those things ahead of time. And then you can just apply a policy to a device. In addition to that, for a customer, you can apply a default policy to that customer. And what that will do is all future devices that get added to that customer will automatically have that policy. Now, to be clear, it will not apply the policy to existing devices under that customer when you change the default device policy. In order to do it for existing devices, you'll want to go here and then you can mass select if you want, we can, you can use like shift or control to select more than one, and then you can change the policy here. So you can do that for existing devices. Okay, so uh, we launched policies there. We also gave you guys a new request form. So it's a lot snazzier looking. Um, new request form with the ability to include a screenshot. Um, and they can see your contact info and update their contact info. Um, so that is there. Uh, it took us a, a while to actually get that out and not that long to build. Um, but the reason we had to wait so long is because we were working on the Kabuto service. So the Kabuto service, what represented a huge change. So Kabuto used to be just an EXE. Uh, if you went into task manager, it showed up as a process. Uh, the issue with that was that it didn't work on standard user accounts and it also wasn't super stable. Lots of things could just kill the process and then Kabuto wouldn't be running. So what we had to do was turn it into a service and that's actually a huge change. It required us to rewrite most of the code 
to split it into multiple different things. So one is the Kabuto service here, and then also two different processes, which are the Kabuto app runner and the Kabuto service runner. So now it's split into all these different things. The Kabuto app runner is this GUI part here, uh, and then the service runner is what does all the work in the background. So uh, when we change that into a service, um, it took quite a while to test that because it represented such a big change and you guys already have a ton of devices. We wanted to make sure that it would be a smooth transition. Um, obviously, there have been a few issues here and there with that um, and we're quickly patching all of those up. But for the most part, um, it was a smooth transition. Okay, so we launched the Kabuto service. And the Kabuto service enabled us to do a bunch of things. Number one, it has a much better update system. Um, you'll notice if we go into the C drive here and you go under program files and now the folder, instead of being Kabuto here, the folder is repair tech and then Kabuto. Um, every one of these folders here represents a different version. So right now we're on 20404. Every time we release an update, you'll get a new folder here and that's how you'll know it updated. This update system is far more robust than previous ones and uh, makes us a lot less nervous about releasing new versions. Um, so, yes. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to get to some questions before I move on. Oh, actually, uh, before I do that, we released users as well recently. So users is a feature that allows you to have multiple logins. So if your technicians want to have a login and you want to have a login, you can accommodate that. Each uh, user you can apply different permissions to. So can they apply upgrades and mess with policies? Um, can they change your custom brand and integration settings? Can they modify your plan and payment info? And then can they add other users? So you can do this. This is no extra charge or anything, but you do have to be on a paid plan. Free plans only get one user. Okay, so um, there's that. We also did launch Recur and we added a bunch of different um, repair shopper integration goodies. I won't dive super into that because it won't apply to everybody, but the repair shopper integration is far more awesome than it was before, suffice it to say. Okay, so. Um, let's answer some questions and then I will move on to show you some new stuff. Question from Wes, are you going to be releasing a Mac OS version? Um, yes, at some point. I don't have an estimate as to when, but that is something we want to do. Uh, question from Robert, why can't we view the license number on the dashboard once we activate Manage AV through the dash panel? Um, right. So if you're referring to the MC soft license, uh, if we're managing it for you, that's why you can't view it because there's no reason you need to know about it. Um, however, uh, if you are using bring your own key, which is a feature that, um, you can use. So if, if it's under managed, then we're managing the whole thing for you. You should never have to worry about it. Um, but you can also enter your own license, uh, and in that case, we do show it to you. Question from Robert, why can't we have a visible link to a direct download of the AV just in case it never syncs? Um, sure, I mean, just to be clear, we use the normal MCSoft installer, so you can go and use that. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. So if you want to go and install MCSoft uh, manually, you can you can do that. Yeah. Uh, question from Soren: The Danish translation for the service request is bad. Will this be improved? Um, it's the first time hearing about it being bad. So if you want to have changes made, I can send you a file, and you can give me new translations, and I will update it for you. Um, my, e uh, I'm sure you have my email already, so I won't worry about that. If not, just let me know and I'll give it to you. Question from Greg. I don't currently get the screenshot in my email when a client submits the form. Is that something that will be added in the future? Um, right. So what, what Greg is referring to is if you go to requests here, I have all my requests, uh, 
closed. I wonder if some of these have a screenshot maybe. I don't, I don't know if, I don't know which one of these will have a screenshot, but um, I can request a new one, I guess. So um, what Greg is referring to is you should be able to see a screenshot when you go to your online dashboard. Now, um, part of the issue that he's bringing up is that he's not able to see the um, he's not able to see the screenshot in the email we send out. So that is a task that at some point we will get to. Um, there are a few higher priority things right now, um, but you should be able to see the request from uh, the online dashboard. I know that's not as helpful as if it was in the email. So I'll try to get that in there somewhere, but we've got a pretty strict set of things that we're going through at the moment. Robert says on the contact form, can we have it show more than one phone number as some of us have an office number and a mobile number? Um, so just to make sure I understand Robert, are you talking about this right here? Okay. Um, understand. So you can enter whatever you want in, if you go to settings and you go to custom branding and you go to phone number, you can type whatever you want here. So you could put a space and put another phone number if you want to. It's too long because it's on one line. Okay, and I understand. Um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, it's probably not uh, built uh, in such a way that you'd be able to do that, I guess. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't have a great solution for you on that. So um, if you wanna submit a ticket, I can turn it into a feature request in our system and we can we can see what we can do. Okay, um, Sean says, sometimes I've noticed multiple tray icons and when I move my mouse over them, it disappears. Right, okay, so the reason this happens, Sean, is actually, you're correct. Um, it happens because, um, it happens whenever Kabuto gets killed ungracefully. So most of the time when that happens, that's because we released an update. Um, so we're working on gracefully shutting down Kabuto and we'll fix that. And then you won't see that anymore. But when you see that, that usually means that the device just updated. Okay. Got a question from McFarland IT. Have you figured out why Kabuto service does not run on startup on some devices? Still having problems with a few clients. Yes, we have. And we released an update yesterday in order to, um, in order to fix that. So the reason that was happening was because the Kabuto service, let me open up the service here. If I go down to Kabuto, um, the service was running, uh, we had it as automatic like this like this Intel Security Assist Helper. Um, and that basically starts it up right away. We changed it to delayed start, and that should fix all those startup issues. Um, it will take a set, like, you know, 20 seconds after startup now before Kabuto starts, but it will also fix that startup issue. And that uh, update has already been released. Greg says, can we remove old versions from the Kabuto install directory on client PCs? Um, hmm. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's probably fine in most cases, but um, I guess if there was an emergency and we wanted to roll back the versions and you deleted those folders, uh, that might be bad. I, why would you want to remove them just to free up space? I'll, I'll move on while you answer that. Um, let's see. 
Soren says, will it be possible to show what AV is installed on a client PC when it's another third party software like ESET Kaspersky? Uh, yeah, totally. Um, hmm, how can I? Yes. Right now, what we have is in monitoring, you can see what AV is installed, but we don't tell you what. We actually have that data, so it wouldn't be hard for us to show it to you. Um, I'll put a feature request in there. There's a lot of little things like that, informational things. Actually, I mean, theoretically, you can go into installed applications here, and you can see what's installed. So, I mean, I can go down here and go to MCSoft, and I can see that MCSoft's there. Obviously, that's not as straightforward as us saying, here's what AV is there, but you can see all the things installed. Let's see. Pat says, will custom branding apply to the install as well at some point, AKA my company, instead of saying repair tech for the software? Yes, that's an active feature request, and yes, we will do it. Uh, okay, so. Miguel says, just got here. I do have a question on devices I have already deployed. Do I need to reinstall Kabuto in order for them to change to a service? No, you don't. The update system is built in. All that it needs to happen is they need to run Kabuto. And when they run Kabuto, they'll immediately see that there's an update and they will update to the service. Um, okay, the co computers that are on 24 seven, is it okay to add a task in the task scheduler? Um, I don't know. I'm, can you be more specific as to what you want to add in the task scheduler? A task to do what? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to pause for a second. There are more questions, but I want to show you guys the new stuff so you don't get too antsy, and then we'll come back to the questions. Okay. So uh, for a long time now, we've been telling you guys that the Kabuto service enables us to do lots of cool stuff. Um, one of the things that people have really wanted is to be able to force a sync to a Kabuto device. Uh, today I'm showing you a prototype of that. We're going to make a few changes and then we're going to launch it to you. Um, it's pretty much ready to go. It's been tested, uh, but I'm, it won't look exactly the same as what you're going to see today. It might look a little bit different, but the essence is the same. So if I go to my device here, this is actually my laptop that I'm giving you this demo on. You'll see now there's a connectivity section right here. You can see when the last sync was, and you can see whether or not the device is online. If the device is online, we can force a sync. This will, do, this will run the whole sync. So uh, to demonstrate this, I want to do a couple things. First of all, I have this Kabuto service running here. If I stop the service within 30 seconds, it's going to change this status to offline. Um, it has a timeout of 30 seconds, so uh, it can take up to 30 seconds for it to do that. Um, you shouldn't have to refresh the dashboard or anything, but I'm going to do it just in case. So once that stops, then this force sync button will go away and then we can turn it back on and you'll see that. Uh, what this force sync will do is a couple things. Uh, first of all, if you make any changes to your settings or custom branding or anything like that, your policies, you can then force a sync to have those changes take effect. In addition to that, um, on the settings page here, we have a restart this device button. This is the first action that is what we call a pending action. So if I click this button, what it will do is it will put an action pending here. And then when the device syncs, it will do that action. So uh, I'm not going to do that because then that would restart the webinar. But you can see this change to offline. If I start this again, we'll see that it changes to online. So this gives you a good indication as to whether the Kabuto service is running um, or whether it has an internet connection, because if it doesn't have an internet connection, obviously it can't do this. Um, so this will turn back on in a second, and then I'll demonstrate a force sync. So what we have to do, uh, this might be a good demonstration for some people as well. Uh, if you're ever wondering if Kabuto is not doing something properly in program data, Kabuto logs, you can see there's a bunch of logs here. This is where we store all that debug info. 
Um, the Kabuto service runner is where most of the stuff happens because the service is the one that is doing most of the stuff. I'm going to open this up with Notepad++ and then I'm going to actually close all of these things. Okay, so um, if I go to view and I will tail that log, so we'll go to the bottom and we can see that it is doing stuff. Um, so if you ever want to see if it's doing stuff, you can do that here. Okay, so um, let's make sure that the service knows it's running. So it doesn't know that yet. Okay, so it's online now. Um, I want to make sure that it's not syncing. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna sync in 320 seconds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a for sync here. So there's one action pending, and then once it syncs, then this will go away. So it's a really straightforward <laughs> uh, feature, but it's massively helpful if you want to make changes to anything. Um, again, this is kind of this layout and this visual here. So you can see last sync just changed. Um, this visual is not final, so it may change. Okay, so um, let me get back to some questions. Uh, got a question from Scott here. I still have some unsynced devices since June. How do I sync them? So to me, uh, when I see a device that hasn't synced since June, to me what that says is it hasn't upgraded yet to the Kabuto service. So what you probably need to do for those devices is manually run them. So to do that, you'll need to log into that computer probably um, and just go to the program files, Kabuto and run kabuto.exe as administrator. It should then automatically see that it can upgrade to the Kabuto service and upgrade. Um, there were some bugs in the past before the Kabuto service was launched that caused devices not to sync. So upgrading them should fix those issues. Cody says, would it be possible to turn off notices for certain events? For example, device manager issue. Yes, you can totally do that. If you go to your settings for any device, you can choose what you get an email about and what the user sees a request form for. So that's all here and you can save that. In addition, if you want to mass apply those, you can go to policies and go to any policy and you can go to here um, and monitoring can choose the email. Um, in for particular notifications, we're actually revamping that whole system right now. So one of the things we're working on is making all of the triggers better. Um, we want to get rid of redundant notifications for the same stuff and make those notifications really useful for you. So we are working on a whole, we're rewriting that whole system. So um, our goal is to make it so you don't have to turn off notices for certain events because we're not notifying you about them if they're not important. Miguel says, also, how can I change the default customer to actual name of the customer? These, this are the first 15 customers we deployed when we subscribed to Kabuto. Yes, I understand what you're saying. What you'll probably want to do is go into customers, create a new customer. Uh, so, for example, I have, um, I have under, one under F and F, right? So I have um, this one here, Chelsea Brown Dell. What I can do is I can migrate this device to a different customer. And that's this button right here. You can do that from this page or you can go to your devices page and you can select more than one if I wanted to. I'm just gonna select this one for now and I can transfer to customer and then I can just type the name in and I can transfer all devices. So now that has changed. So what I would recommend is not changing the name of default customer. I would recommend making a new customer and then transferring the devices there. Does that make sense? Okay, another question here um, from Robert. Why is syncing on a six hour period? So syncing is actually gonna change. So um, let me explain kind of the genesis of syncing and how that whole thing came about. So essentially what happened is Kabuto started off as a tool for communicating with your clients. It didn't have all these RMM things. So it was just supposed to check once every six hours. 
whether there were any issues, right? We didn't want to check more than every once every six hours because that would slow the computer down. And, you know, it's not like your hard drive health is going to change more than once every six hours. So um, we started off on this six hour schedule where every six hours we'd be checking stuff. Then people started requesting features for remote monitoring management stuff like managed AV, monitoring, those kinds of things, patch management. And so we added them into that sync that happened once every six hours. Um, now that's actually fine on the Windows side, but what happens is on the website when I make a change, so if I want to now keep Evernote up to date, um, I want that to happen immediately on the device. And so the six hour thing actually isn't that helpful. Um, so what we're actually gonna be doing is getting rid of this concept of syncing. Different things will run on different schedules based on what they should do. So for example, these trigger status things, they will still run once every six hours unless you do a force sync. Um, However, all these other things will eventually be instantaneous. So if I change Evernote here, it should instantly update that in Kabuto on the, on the Windows side, right? For now, what you can do is you can do a force sync. So you can force it to do that whenever you make a change. Um, but coming soon, we will make things instantaneous. Okay, um, let's see. Will you add the ability to send, this is a question from Neil, will you add the ability to send log files from devices to support? As it stands, there's a little issue with the device, I need to have it physically present to send logs. Um, actually, so that's half true. Um, we automatically up, upload debug logs. The issue is that sometimes the problem is so serious that the debug logs don't get uploaded. So 95% of the time when you have an issue, we already have your debug logs. Um, but sometimes we ask just in case there's a debug log that we're missing, if the issue sounds serious. Um, so if you can't physically get to the computer, a lot of the time we still have enough debug logs to make sense of the problem. Uh, has the force sync feature been deployed already? I'm not seeing it. It has not been deployed yet. Um, right now I have a, a flag on my account that says I can use it. We're going to deploy that today or tomorrow. So you'll see it very, very soon, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek. We're just kind of changing around the way things look a little bit and adding in a couple things and then we'll be good to go and we'll launch it to all your accounts. Um, however, your devices have all already been updated so that once we release this feature, they'll be able to go like that. Uh, question from Robert, when you use force sync, it will also finally download the AV. Um, it does the whole sync. So if you enable manage antivirus, for example, it will, and then you do this force sync, it does the whole thing. So it will install MCSoft if you, um, if you, if it hasn't already done that. Greg says, so the first thing would be helpful if we wanted to change a profile, change the MC stop schedule, change our contact info, et cetera. Yes. So for sync, again, it updates all the info. So if I make a change on the online dashboard and then I do a for sync, it will, it's like starting Kabuto from scratch. It's going to get all the info and do whatever it has to do. Kenneth says, does for sync mean Kabuto will now alert us things in real time, such as crash alerts and such? Um, so what ForceSync will enable you to do in terms of alerts is you can, if you want these things to, uh, refresh, you can do a ForceSync and it's going to check them all again. Pat says, are you planning to be able to add the ability to kill, restart, stop, et cetera, services, startup items, uh, anything along those lines? Yes, that's, that's on the way. Miguel says, are you going to post this on YouTube? Um, I'm not sure we'll post it on YouTube. We might, um, but we'll have a recording. So if you want the recording, you can, you can get it. Uh, Robert says, in my log, timer interval 216. Yeah, those are in milliseconds. So I don't know what, I don't know, what is that, 216. Uh, yeah, so that's six hours. Uh, why are we 
we able to install apps so we cannot uninstall or disable them? Is this something we have to do via remote access? Uh, yeah, that feature isn't in there yet. So, I mean, we'll, we'll build it, but it's not in there yet. Kenda says, how does updating of third-party software work with patch management? Does it pull from Chocolatey or do you need to approve from your end? Um, right, so it does, we use Chocolatey in the back end and then we also do stuff on our end. So it's a combo. Michael says, in the future, could you work with Repair Shopper to create a way to make custom customer list that targets customers without or with Kabuto installed. This would allow us to send marketer emails to customers based on what Kabuto recur subscription they are on. Right. Um, we have something like that, I think. I think there's a, there is a marketer campaign. I think there is a marketer campaign to send the Kabuto installer. I'm not 100% sure. So, um, I'll have to check on that. Cody says, can we force sync on all devices at once? Um, not at the moment. I actually had to check. Not at the moment. You can't do that yet. Um, but that might, that's something we'll add in, obviously. Alan says, would it be possible to monitor services and create alerts, such as hard drive error check event to query system alert when event IDs? Oh. Right. Um, so you mean like checking the event log for certain types of errors? Is that what you're talking about, Alan? Cool. Uh, yes, um, will eventually that will eventually be built. Um, that's actually been a feature request for a really long time. So. Uh, we want to make it so you can build custom triggers and, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Under the default plans, can we have a way to change the plan names? You mean in policies here? Is that what you're referring to? Okay, got it. Um, there's no way to change the names, but you can delete them and make your own. Uh, will there be a point in the future to add my own third party software that I can update myself? For example, apps that aren't in the default list. Um, yes, but that's not, uh, going to happen soon. So we're probably gonna, so for ex one thing I will say is if you guys want other apps in this managed applications list, please let us know. It's pretty easy for us to add new apps. So um, just let us know if there are other things in there. Uh, we do have LibreOffice, uh, Robert, if that was one of your requests. Uh, anyway, so um, yeah, just let us know if there's other things we want, you want added in here. Let's see. Travis says, have you looked at box starter yet? No, I have not looked at that yet. I will take down a note to look into that. Okay. Um, Greg says, are there plans to add SMS notifications for certain client PCs or events? Some events I would like to know when something major happens as quickly as possible. Uh, we don't have any plans for that at the moment. However, you can do that if you're using Repair Shopper. So we send over alerts to Repair Shopper uh, and you can get SMS messages that way. Uh, Soren says, I would like it if you can add Nextcloud client to patch management. Uh, totally. I have no idea what Nextcloud is, but um, I will take a look and see what I can do. 
Uh, I, coincidentally, the easiest way for me to track some of this stuff, because there's so many messages in this webinar that I might miss some stuff, if you could send an email to support at repairtechsolutions.com with whatever apps you want, we could pretty quickly investigate that and find out. Okay, going back through these questions. I know I missed some of them. See here. Okay, cool. Um, looks like I got most of them. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to post them now. If I missed anything, you can post it again. Um, yes, you can have an update on managed backup. It's not ready yet. Um, we have a couple other things we're going to release before we start working on that. We have a partner lined up um, and we just need to uh, we just need to build it but it's a pretty big task and there are a couple things we're gonna release first um, yeah let's see here how soon will the recording be available uh, within 24 hours how about details on Microsoft patch management Sure. So um, for monitoring, we have these win this Windows updates thing um, that allows you to change the update schedule. Um, Windows 10 doesn't really allow you to do much more than that. You kind of have to build in a bunch of other stuff and use a WSU server. There's a couple different ways to do it, but it's pretty complicated. Um, so at the moment, we only have the ability to change the update schedule. Now on Windows 7 and 8, you get more uh, configurability. Um, but I would say that phase two of Windows updates, which is like essentially being able to pick and choose which updates you want to install, um, is probably not going to be done till after we release stuff like Manage Backup and other stuff like that. Sebi says, can we get a feature to deploy basic maintenance services like defragging? Yes, we're going to build a scripting engine. So, yeah. Charles says, any idea when you will add TeamViewer type functionality via Kabuto? Yes, we're going to do that. Uh, don't worry. It'll just wait a minute. Um, okay, some more questions. An update to Andrew's question. I see you have proprietary software. Okay, understand. Um, yeah, so what I probably would say is the easiest way that you'll be able to accomplish that is actually when we launch scripting. So scripting will enable you to write a PowerShell script or something that will download and install that third-party software. Uh, for those of you wondering if we're going to integrate TechSuite, um, yes, in a, in a sense, we will. Uh, we're still figuring it out. In some way, shape, or form, you'll be able to essentially run tools. Um, it may not actually be TechSuite doing it, but yes. see here Soren says I would like it in the future if you could add more detailed view of hard drive capacity um, I think we oh we're missing that here okay yeah I'll uh, I'll take a look at that for you it's not that big of a deal Robert says any way to get Kabuto to disable Microsoft Pretender when we install MCSoft um hmm. uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to ask. Let's see here. Auto says, is there support for localized versions of managed applications or only US slash English? 
Um, at the moment, it's only English versions. That's a good question. Um, hmm. I'd have to look into how we would do localized versions. If you could submit a feature request, uh, like a ticket, that would help me track that and give you a response. Miguel says, will it be possible to have Kabuto create a monthly health report of devices we have so we may be able to email the customer with them? Uh, yeah, so reporting is a commonly requested feature. I think that we will um, we will be able to do that at some point, yeah. Sebi says, I think this falls under branding, but will we be able to eventually hide any reference to Kabuto on the customer side? I, re I don't I really don't want them to do a Google search to find out how much the service is costing us and then complain about it. Sure, that's totally fair. Uh, we're working on a bunch of custom branding things, uh, such as making the installer have your name, not Kabuto, uh, making the thing in the control panel say your shop name instead of control instead of Kabuto. Um, so there's a couple things we're working on for that. I don't think we're ever going to be able to fully custom brand it. And that isn't because we don't want to, it's mostly because technically, I'm. I mean, I guess we could make it generic so I could like, we could rename the service like agent. Um, so, uh, there, there's some things in there. We can't change stuff too fast because antivirus software will, would pick that up. Um, Okay. Auto regarding your request uh, previously, I don't think we previously could have done that because we had to rebuild the um, the patch Windows sorry, the application patch management stuff. Now it's a lot more feasible. So um, if you could either send me your old request or um, a, make a new one, that would be super helpful because now it's actually feasible for us to do something about that. Neil says, if a system has a RAID setup, is Kabuto smart enough to notice if one of the drives disappears? As in computer no longer detects it so that it can't be monitored via smart. Ooh, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. We, we did fix an issue that previously existed where it was only scanning the primary hard drive, so now it scans all of them. However, I'm not sure how that relates to RAID. Um, none of our test systems have RAID on them, so I can tell you that. Do you have any plans for a mobile app for the dashboard? Um, at the moment, that is not one of our priorities. Our biggest priorities are getting out more features so that you guys can make more money. Um, that's kind of the primary thing we're focused on, right? So uh, making it so you can remote into computers, so that you can do remote support with it, uh, adding managed backup, adding scripting, those are the kinds of things that we're really concerned with right now because they enable you to offer more in your services. Uh, obviously, a mobile app would be super nice and I'm totally on board with that concept. Uh, and then it probably doesn't have as big of an impact as those other things on your revenue, right? So that's kind of the way we're prioritizing this stuff. It, it should work okay, though, on any device that has a decent resolution. So, like Robert said, on an iPad, it should work fine. Or any other, you know, tablet. Miguel says, is it, will it be possible to reply to a request from within the dashboard? I guess that uh, depends what you mean by reply. So, do you mean, like, it shows up here in there, uh, in their app, because that's something we've considered, is like making chat. Obviously, it's super low priority idea, but uh, turning it into more of a real-time chat thing. 
that's one concept of reply. And then there's also like replying to them via email, via the dashboard. Uh, we have something kind of like that at the moment where you can click send email here. Uh, but all this is, is a mail to. You can see in the bottom right, bottom left hand corner of my screen, the mail to, and then the email address. So if you have a default email client configured, uh, this will open that up. But that's all we have at the moment. If you could let me know, Miguel, what you're envisioning, I might be able to make something happen. Question from McFarland IT. Any plan for integrated chat within Kabuto? Um, right. So, yeah, that's kind of what I was just saying is there's the concept of turning Kabuto into more of a chat agent. Some people actually don't want that. So that's kind of a controversial feature. Some people don't want their clients to think they're going to respond immediately and they actually want it to be more of like a send a message thing. So if we built that, it wouldn't necessarily make everybody happy, which is one thing that we're uh, aware of. And then also, um, it's not necessarily like the most revenue driving feature. So for example, uh, managed backup enables you to make more money than chat does. So it, that's why it's kind of a relatively low priority for us. Soren says, I would like if you could add two-factor authentication to the Kabuto online dashboard. I totally agree. I want to add that. Charles says, can we automatically send update emails to customers so they know we have been monitoring it all as well? Uh, yes. So reports are definitely something that we want to build and enable you to share with your customers. Robert says we could make it turn off or on in the dashboard. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, there's a way to make chat really cool and make it work. And um, I think it's a fun concept and I would love to build it. And then at the same time, like it doesn't represent a very high priority feature for us, right? Because it's not going to bring you guys a ton of revenue compared to the other things we could be building, right? Like remote session stuff scripting, um, managed backup, those things are things you can really put in a pricing table and charge a premium for. Chat, you might be able to, but it's kind of arguable whether that has value for the customer, I mean. Miguel says, let's say a customer sends a request with a message and the issue is so simple, you can send a paragraph of instructions to them for the issue to be resolved by them instead of having to remote to the computer and this be done in form of chat through the Kabuto window. Um, yeah, so I think we've come up with the concept of being able to send like a message to them that's a custom message. So in your case, Miguel, you could say send message to Windows and it would send a message to them, but it wouldn't appear. So there's a difference between that and then chat, right? So like custom messages, I consider a slightly different feature because you can send a custom message and still not give them the feeling that they're chatting with you live. And I think that's it's also a lot different in terms of our development time. So it's not that complicated for us to send a custom message, right? Um, one of the things we built recently is essentially a custom message, uh, but it's for a particular purpose. So hold on, let me show you. This is one of the things we just released. Um, it was super easy for us to build. Uh, it took about five minutes, but this right here, so this is kind of what I'm talking about. Like, it's really easy for us to replace this text and do fun stuff with it. So it's one thing if you want to be able to send them a paragraph with instructions, and then it's a different thing if you want chat, because they take a different amount of time for us to build.
Okay, Dennis wants to see that again. Um, it's in the release notes and it's also in the documentation. But if you go to your Kabuto directory and you open it up, you'll see that there is the Kabuto app runner. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, the Kabuto app runner is the is the part that's running the system tray thing. That's all it is. It's the it's the it's the GUI for requesting service. That's all it is. So there's the Kabuto app runner, and then you just type dash dash demo. Press enter, and it pops up an alert. So this is helpful. Um, this is helpful if you're demoing this to a client and you want to show them what will happen. That's basically the purpose of this. Soren says, would it be in the future possible to show the date or timestamps in local? In Denmark, we write it like, oh, I see. You want to change the, uh, the, the time format. Um, yeah, I mean, it's totally possible. Uh, nobody's ever asked for that before. So uh, we've never done any work on it. But if you want to submit a feature request, I can totally see if we can do that. Neil says, can you add a section to the customer request form for our system tray menu entries? It's a lot easier to say open this shortcut on your desktop than, okay, look in the system tray for an icon that looks like this. Okay, so let me make sure I understand what you're asking for. So in this thing here, you want a link to your system tray menu entries. Is that correct? Cool. Um, I think that's a great idea. And it also would be pretty easy for us to make. So, um, again, if you could submit a ticket for that, I'll turn it into a feature request and we'll see what we can do. Robert says, any way to stop Kabuto from re-adding the desktop icon once you delete it? Yes, that was a bug. We fixed it. So now if you delete it, it shouldn't recreate it. So that doesn't happen anymore. Something possibly handy for the app runner tip would be where we could fill out a form on our dashboard with a message that maybe states we have seen your service requests and have scheduled to review your system tomorrow at 9 a.m. or something along those lines. Um, okay. So let me make sure I understand what you're saying, Greg. So somebody submits a request for service to you, and then you on the online dashboard are able to fill out a form, and then the user then after you fill out that form sees the contents of the form on the window side? Is that what you're getting at? Okay, got it. Yeah, um, so I think that's what I was alluding to. I think that the ability to send a custom message down is totally possible and isn't that difficult. So I think we can do that. Uh, Robert says, even when create desktop icon is unchecked. Um, create desktop icon. I'm not 100% sure what I'm not 100% sure which uh what you're referring to Robert when you say unchecked Okay, gotcha. Any other questions, guys? We've got about 10 more minutes if you have more.
Curtis says, why is everything listed twice for the headings in policy? Policy. I'm not 100% sure what you're referring to, Curtis. Uh, Mike says, I'm late. Will this be posted somewhere? Yes, it's being recorded. Um, if you'd like a recording, just let us know. Uh, did you in, did you answer the default customer question I had earlier? Yes, I did, Miguel. Um, it should be in the recording, but I'm happy to go over it again if you if you like. The gist of it was what I would do is create a new customer and then transfer the devices. You can you can easily transfer devices by going here, uh, selecting any like one or more devices, and then going to this transfer to customer, and you can transfer from default customer, all the devices to a new customer. Does that make sense? Robert says, when is the meetup finally going to happen? Um, you mean like a in-person meetup? We don't have one planned, but I mean, if you, you wanna come down, just let me know. Neil says, any cool things in the queue that you shouldn't tell us about, but will anyway? Yes, there are cool things in the queue that I shouldn't tell you about, but I won't tell you about them until they're ready. <laughs> but, but I say, I mean, frankly, it's always surprising to me when you guys are surprised by features, because every time we do these webinars, I tell you the stuff we're working on. So it's not like we're going to release anything like totally out of left field that that's never been mentioned, right? I mean, they, the feature requests come from you guys, so, you know. Um, let's see here, Robert says Vegas, uh, you know, maybe at some point, but at the moment I really like what I'm working on and I don't really wanna go to Vegas. Um, let's see. Soren says, will it be possible to uninstall software from the dashboard? Yes, it, it will be. Uh, it is not yet, but it will be for sure. Uh, any thoughts toward adjusting the United, the USD price for international or other country exchange rates and we can afford to upgrade? Um, yes, I do have thoughts on that. Um, at the moment, what we've been doing is we've been saying, if you want to give us an upfront um, payment, so let's say you wanted to put $100 on your account, you can give that to us upfront, we'll apply it as a credit on your account, and then all future charges will go against that. Obviously, that's not perfect. It, it does let you know what your exchange rate is going to be on the time that you give us that payment but I do recognize it's not ideal because the next time you want to give us a payment, it might be a different exchange rate. Um, so there is, um, we want to build a system such that we can give you an option between like eight currencies and you can choose between them. Um, and then you'll be able to, we'll have pricing in those currencies. At the moment, uh, we don't have that. So I, I do want to build that for you, for sure. Let's see here. Cody says, Google Chrome doesn't seem to work well with the dashboard. For example, can't seem to change a request to closed. Tried it from more than one PC. Is there a problem recently with Chrome use and the dashboard? No, there shouldn't be an issue with Chrome. It's what I use all the time. Um, let me see if I can close a thing. So it worked for me in Chrome. I don't know. I mean, if you're still experiencing an issue, please let me know. Uh, I should say if you have any like pop-up blockers or like anything that would cause JavaScript to not run, that may be an issue. So any extensions you might have, they might cause problems. Mike says, are there plans for us to be able to start, stop, restart services? Yes. Um, 
early on you discussed having the installer automatically add a new device to a particular customer. I may have missed. We will need to tr keep track of each installer we have. Um, okay, so as a recap, for every customer, we automatically give you a customer installer that is specific to that customer. So if you go into any of them and you go to settings, you'll see that there is an installer here for you that you can download or you can get a URL for. In addition to that, you can get that same download here. No problem. And this is tied to a particular customer. Uh, however, you can also use the standard installer. This allows you from the installer to create a new customer or add a device to an existing customer. However, it's probably not what you want to share with your clients because then they can create new customers too. So this is probably what your text will be using. This is probably what you'll be sending to people. Pat says, really like the progression over the years, really feel like this is totally viable to fully use now and that we can all make some money on this newer area of residential RMM. Thanks again for all the hard work. Yeah, no problem. Uh, that's why we do it. We want to help you guys grow and uh, we like working on this stuff. It's fun. Soren says, would it be possible to search for all devices with particular software? Um, okay, let me make sure I understand. So you wanted to, you want to be able to like search devices for like Google and have it come up with all the devices that have Google Chrome installed? Got it. Um, you've got a lot of unique feature requests, Soren. I've never heard that request, but I kind of like it. So uh, if you want to submit a feature request, that's a cool idea. Um, Charles says, how long till you release the brandable installer, et cetera, no mention of Kabuto that you mentioned. Um, I don't really have a timeline on that. It's a pretty easy feature for us to build. So I'm trying to squeeze it into one of our sprints. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely on the list and I'm just trying to find a good time to squeeze it in. Um, yeah, Greg had a suggestion for those of you having Chrome issues, try it in incognito and see if it's cookies or cache or extensions causing the issue. Robert uh, doesn't like how small the font is on the online dashboard for his huge monitor. Um, yeah, I totally can understand that. Um, had somebody in a webinar today or yesterday ask me to zoom in on the uh, on the online dashboard so you could see it. So I get that. Um, not quite sure. I guess uh, that's, you know, what we've wanted to do for a long time is to make the online dashboard responsive, uh, which essentially means making it so it works really well on mobile. And part of that is scaling things really well. So uh, what that would do is fonts should appear the same size on different size monitors. And um, that's something that's kind of been on the back burner for a long time. So anyway, uh, Mike McCall says, any thoughts on client grouping? Uh, I'm not 100% sure what you are meaning by client grouping. That I'm going to take a guess. That's why we released customers, which are essentially just groups of devices. Um, is, that, is that what you're referring to? So like Impress Technologies has two devices under it. I can see those devices here. Okay, customer groupings. Um, no, I don't, I'm not sure that that's like, I feel like that's maybe policies. Like if you wanted to have a policy for residential clients and then you wanted to go in there and see all the customers it affects and all the devices it affects, you could do that. So I would say that 
customer groupings, like you could accomplish that by just making a policy for a grouping of customers. Uh, we do have the ability to see whether they're residential or business or not there as well. Yeah, uh, Robert, I totally, yeah, I, I know about the M's and pixels and all of that stuff. Um, you know, the font size is really only one part of it. Uh, in fact, the font size is probably the easiest part of it. Uh, the rest of it is kind of like, you know, I mean, if I take this and I start going like this, you know, it works fine until there, right? So um, there's a lot of stuff that can be made better and um the hard part is making all of this um responsive for the smaller screen sizes um it's again gonna happen at some point just not yet because we wanna we wanna build the features that are gonna make you guys more money cool um Yeah, um, uh, you know, as far as the dashboard responsiveness and all that stuff goes, uh, we know how to do it. It's it's not, you know, that hard or anything. It's just not the highest priority at the moment, to be honest. We have other features that are going to help you guys grow more. Um, so it's all a matter of balancing those different things and and building them so that you guys can do that. Okay, cool. Looks like we've exhausted our time. I appreciate you guys sticking around and asking questions. It's always fun to do this. If you have any, um, if you have any follow up questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I'm happy to chat. Uh, if you have any feature requests, a ticket really helps. You can just email support at repairtechsolutions.com. That helps us track it and get back to you when it gets built. Uh, and then also any details you send us are helpful so that we can implement it in such a way that it is actually accomplishing what you want it to. With all that said, thank you guys for attending. We hope that you'll come again next time. Talk to you soon.